As I shared at our Vision Sunday, we are calling a fast at Connect Church um, for the Lent period from the 2nd of March up to Easter. So I wanted to bring some teaching on fasting to help us to understand what fasting is and why we're doing this. Now the definition of biblical fasting is abstinence from food and or drink as an element of private or public religious devotion. Now in the Old Testament, this is not something that we find in the books of law, in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. So what is fasting in the Old Testament? Well, it's a sign of lament and mourning. We see it in Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4, that when Nehemiah hears news of the state of the walls of Jerusalem, he mourns and weeps and fasts for a period of time. It's also a sign of repentance in 1 Samuel 7, 6, when the Ark of the Covenant is captured by the Philistines and then returned to the people of Israel. The people turn back to God, they confess their sins and they fast. We also see fasting for breakthrough. 2 Samuel 12, 16, we see David pleading with God for healing for his sick child. And Esther 4.16, where Esther calls on the nation of Israel to fast on her behalf as she goes before King Xerxes to plead for the lives of the Jews. Now in the New Testament, the key passage on fasting we find in Matthew 6, 16 to 18 in the Sermon on the Mount. And the context here is of not practising your righteousness in front of others. There are three things. It speaks of when you give to the needy, when you pray, and I'm sure you'll agree as Christians these are really important things. I'm sure they're things that you put into practice all the time. But fasting is also included here which reminds us of its importance. So let's read that passage, Matthew 6, 16 to 18. And these are the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and dishevelled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, and then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father, who knows what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. There was a practice that some uh, did of, of putting saffron on their faces to make their faces have a yellow colouring so that people could see that they'd been fasting. You know, fasting is not something to be seen or celebrated by people, but rather from these words of Jesus, we recognise that it's a private act of devotion to God. So why do we fast? Well it's an act, a symbol of our dependence upon God. It's saying to God I need you more than what I am fasting from. It's a question of reliance upon God and a symbol of that. It's about relationships. It says that being with you is more important to me than anything else and I demonstrate that by going without and making sacrifices. The purpose is focusing on God and shifting our focus from the things of this world and we don't do it to get stuff you know Jesus speaks of reward but that reward is more of him in our lives now there are a number of fasts that can be observed there's full fasting so abstaining from all food on select days there's partial fasting, so abstaining from some foods for some or all of a period of fasting. There's something called the Daniel fast, which I'm sure you will have heard on, which is modelled on Daniel chapter 1, verses 8 to 17, where Daniel and his friends were exiled to Babylon and taken into the king's service. But they refused to eat the food set before them and the wine that was set before them, the food of the king of the palace. Maybe it was because the food wasn't kosher for Joe, for Jews, Joes, Jews to eat or was food that might have been sacrificed to idols. So they request a 10 day period where they just eat 
vegetables and drink water and then asked to be compared to those who'd eaten the king's food and drank the wine. And they were found after that time to be better nourished, to look more healthy. And also we read that, that doors were opened for them by God. They gained knowledge and understanding and favour with the king. Now a strict Daniel fast, and you can find um, a number of websites that point you to this and tell you the do's and don'ts of it. A strict Daniel fast involves no meat or additional sugars, no yeast, no dairy products, processed food, caffeine, alcoholic drinks. There is of course a, a lesser Daniel type fast that could be just fasting perhaps from meat or um, meat and caffeine, alcohol, sweet treats or a combination of those things and of course for vegans and for vegetarians there may be other things um, to fast from. Of course for some any kind of intermittent um, full or partial fasting from food or a Daniel fast may not be possible, suitable or advisable on health grounds. Uh, it may not be economically viable for some to, um, to change their diet, particularly with the, the Daniel fast. And fasting doesn't have to be from food, it could be fasting from telly, it could be fasting from your favourite programmes or social media or gaming or something like that. But you know it's not so much about what we fast from but more the state of our hearts. We have this incredible principle from 2 Corinthians 9-7 which pertains to giving but it's a principle that applies really to all of our devotions before God. This is what the message, um, how the message puts it. It says, I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and to make up your mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. So coming back to those words of Matthew 6, you know, Jesus is not commanding his listeners or you and I um, to give to the needy, to pray and to fast. There's, there's actually no command for these things in the New Testament. It's rather an invitation, not that you've got to do this, but that you get to do this. Can I just share with you a couple of examples? I, I've shared these before, but they may help us to think about this um, comparison between what I've got to do or what I feel I've got to do and what I get to do. And these are really two quite negative um, um, examples of fasting. The first one was when I was a new Christian and it was at the church where I got saved. They held a day of fasting and decided to break that fast by gathering the church together to have an evening meal together. So I thought the night before, if I've got to go all day without food, um, I'm going to really need to fill my boots the night before. So I did that. I absolutely gorged myself almost to the point of being ill. And when I woke up the next morning, I was still full. And I only really started to feel remotely hungry around about lunchtime. And then we had this evening meal again about 5.30, 6 o'clock. But in my mind, I was ticking a box to say that I had fasted all day. The second example was around about 12 years ago, um, just before my dad passed away. And he was very ill. I was needing to go and see him pretty much every other day to care for him, to attend to his personal needs. But I wanted desperately to see breakthrough for him, for his condition. And so I decided that I should fast. Um, so I decided the night before I'm, I'm going to fast tomorrow. And so then I got up the next day. But actually, you know, I was not in a good place the next day. I was just wound up about it. I was grumpy about it. I had that sense, well, I'm just not allowed to have a cup of coffee and I just got so worked up about it they ended up just caving in eventually and having a cup of coffee and breaking my fast. It's two examples of how not to do it, two examples of legalistic approaches to fasting. 
I want to encourage you to not be legalistic. Make it a decision of your heart to fast. But also do it as an act of faith. You know, everything that we do as we apply faith opens up the door, the possibility of an encounter with God. You know, otherwise these things just become either very religious things, don't they? Or they can become gimmicky. So without faith, baptism is like having a bath with your clothes on or like communion is just having a fairly rubbish snack time and fasting is just dieting or being good. But when we apply faith, it's kingdom. There'll be a few questions for you now to help you unpack this a little bit more.